Welcome everyone to another episode of Tabletop Cinema, where we bring together the worlds of filmmaking, tabletop role-playing, and video games, producing a variety of content inspired by fantastical adventures. I'm Mikey, your host. I'm a freelance film director, cinematographer, and screenwriter. I'm also a game master for tabletop role-playing games and a variety streamer here on Twitch. Today we'll be playing a game called The Forgotten City. It's a mystery adventure game about a time loop where we travel 2,000 years into the past to an ancient Roman city where when, if one person sins, everyone dies. We're fine. We got this. Lichcasts, Diwata, and Tabletop Cinema fan. I'm... Wow. <laughs> Thank Lich Arts and Lich Cats, Diwata and Tabletop Cinema fan, whoever you are, Tabletop Cinema fan. Thank you. I'm glad to have fans out there in the world. There's a cat in the back. She has blessed our stream today. It's really a gamble when whenever we start the stream, it's either she's on the supervisor's chair or not, right? This afternoon she is, and I think she sees everyone. <laughs> hi, Passion. Say hi. Actually, she can't hear me because she's deaf. But, you know, it's relaxing with her. So today, what we have for you today. Last week, we actually played 12 minutes and finished it in one sitting. That game is about the time loop as well. And coincidentally, the Forgotten City was lined up after that. And how did I find out, find out about the Forgotten City? I just saw it on the front page of my Steam page. It is recommended to me. I saw the premise and everything I really, li I really like in stories. You know, mystery, ancient ruins fantastical elements these three things just kind of hooked me in when i read more about it i found out that it is actually originally a skyrim mod <laughs> and apparently it's racked over three million downloads and it even won a national writer's guild award so i don't know what to expect but i deliberately didn't watch any trailers i stopped looking more into it because I want to come into this with a fresh perspective, with no expectations. Except I pretty much set my own expectations when I found out that this is an award-winning story. So we're all in this together. <laughs> if you've never played The Forgotten City before, no spoil- uh, If you've played The Forgotten City before, no spoilers please. I'm very- I'm particularly sensitive to that. But just like in 12 minutes last week, internet is spotty. Oh no! How's the internet chat? It's actually been slow. I don't know if people are downloading on our network, but is it is it s stabilized now? Testing. Yeah, just let me know if the internet's spotty. Uh, it. I was kind of worried coming into this. Uh, every I was able to go online. I'm not having any problems from out there. Okay, thanks, Lichcasts. You're fine for me. So I hopefully the internet's stabilized by now. I've been trying to wrangle it um, an hour ago, but hey. If it's working out, and it's working out. So again, uh, The Forgotten City used to be a Skyrim mod and went standalone just recently. And I'm expecting a lot out of the story, but then I'm tempering my expectations. It is supposed to be an award-winning story, but let's see how it goes, right? Hey mom, I hope... <laughs> Thank you for tuning in again, but I hope the internet's working out. Uh, maybe you just have to refresh it on your end, but let's get started on this mystery. So just like last week with 12 minutes, um, I couldn't have done it without chat. <laughs> I got stuck at one point and I just couldn't put the pieces together. Now. Feel, uh, feel free to chip in with your ideas of how to proceed or just discuss the game as we go. But if you have played this before, please, no spoilers and no direct solutions. I do appreciate hints and I'm open to hints. But let's see if I don't get stuck on this one, but man, that music. Ah. Uh, sorry, this is really my thing. 
I just feel like I'm in the deserts with a montage, a travel montage. I feel like I'm in the mummy. I love the mummy, by the way, one of my favorite movies. Hey, it feels bad, man. Mikey Desky. Thank you for lurking once more. Feel free to lurk, hang out, grab a seat, and relax. And let's solve this mystery together, shall we? I dragged you out of the river, I thought you were never gonna wake up. I checked your pockets for ID, a phone, maybe? I hope you don't mind. But all I found was some loose change. So, wanna tell me who you are? Hmm, I don't remember a thing. Alright, choose body type. <laughs> yeah, actually, let's cast the... Develop, let me just hide this window here. Yeah, the devs... I appreciate that they put the spoiler warning out there. I just saw that there are multiple endings. But we're going to be role-playing. We're going to be in character here. We're going to be stepping into the role of character. Selecting a body type. I already know who I'm going to be playing here. So this afternoon, we'll be stepping to the boots of Daisy Barnes, anthropologist from the Miskatonic University. She's actually one of my original characters that I love playing whenever the game involves mystery and adventure and all that pulpy kind of stuff. So some people who are here on chat today are probably familiar with Daisy Barnes and her antics, but if it has something to do with ancient ruins, a lost culture, Cosmic horror. She's the one you go to. Or don't. There are no guarantees that she'll solve the mystery. We'll have a good time with it. Well, it's nice to meet you. And I'm sorry to pry, but any idea why you were floating down the river? What's the last thing you remember? Alright, immediately I'm getting. F you can tell the DNA of this game was from a Skyrim mod, or well, Fallout even, with a... What's the engine that Bethesda uses again? Anyway. Very similar vibes here, very Fallout I'm seeing. Was this a Fallout mod or a Skyrim? It was a Skyrim mod. It's your choices here. Well, in a traditional Bethesda fashion. Oh, I like Archaeologist. Soldier, Fugitive, or Amnesiac. And they have statistics attached to them. But this is Daisy Barnes. I guess in this universe, she'll be an archaeologist. <clears throat> I, I... I was searching for ancient ruins. Oh! You're an archaeologist? Then you'll definitely want to hear this. I don't know if it's exactly what you're looking for, but... There are some ruins just behind you. Roman, I think. I need you to go in there and see if you can find a guy named Al for me. He went in there a few hours ago, and he hasn't come out. I've been freaking out, wondering if he's trapped, or injured, or worse. I would have gone in after him, but he made me promise to stay here, no matter what. There's no way I'm leaving without him, so I'm just kind of... stuck here, waiting. I need... what I mean is, I was hoping... You wouldn't mind going in there to find him? If you can do that, I can get both of you back to civilization in my boat. Please? Hmm. Well, 
Mind if I ask some questions first? Oh, of course. Sorry, I don't mean to be pushy. I just... What do you want to know? Hmm. Where are we? You really don't remember? We're in Italy. This river is the Tiber. Have you tried calling for help? What am I, an idiot? You could hike a long, long way in any direction and never find another soul. Trust me. What's your story? Oh, there's not much to tell. Feels like I've spent my whole life in a dead-end job with an endless commute. Know what I mean? You're not even going to tell me your name. Oh, uh, I'd rather not say if it's all the same to you. I'd really like to know, especially if I'm going to be helping you. Alright, fine. Sorry if I sounded cagey, it's just that I don't always get the best reactions when I introduce myself. My name's... Karen. I feel this, chat. This third option right here. All those Karen memes have really ruined that name, huh? I do have... See, look at that Bloody, Bloody Mary. I... Look. One of my favorite player characters that I love playing is Karin Halimir. Right? But her name is now ruined because of this meme. And it's not even Karen with an E. It's a Karen with an I. And I created her before the meme even started. So... Karen is Karen. Alright? Yeah, she is quite suspicious, actually. She said she needed something, but stopped herself from saying something. Alright, you know, we're just starting out. Let's not get too suspicious yet. Mm. Why didn't you want to tell me your name? Look, if you really want to know all the tragic details, perhaps I can fill you in after you find Al? Who is Al? He's the guy who washed up on the riverbank not long before you did. I thought maybe you two knew each other. I guess not. But maybe the two of you can piece together what you're doing here. In any case, you'll like him, I'm sure. Once you find him, that is. What can you tell me about the ruins? Not much, really. But imagine what you might find in there. Priceless ancient artifacts. Al... She really wants to find this owl. Now the facial animations aren't the best, but was that intentional? Her looking away when she mentioned owl and... I don't know. I don't know, chat. That's all the questions I had. Great. So you're ready to go look for owl? <sighs> well, you did save my life. All right. I'm in. Thank you. The entrance is just past those columns behind you. Please, hurry. Oh, and he left this here. But I think you'll need it more than I will. Flashlight. Heavy duty, battery powered flashlight. Always useful. Thank you. The Mended Spidey, welcome to the chat and thanks for the follow. Now we're having some technical issues here. My Streamlabs just kind of... Oh, I can see chat now. Whew, thought I lost everyone. Hmm, pretty nice environments. An old wooden rowboat. Karen must have used it to rescue me from the river. Ooh. Did the net cut out, Corgol? Or was that on your end? Well, I hope the stream is stable. 
And hopefully it's not dropping frames as well. I'm getting some errors here in Streamlabs. Worried about that. I was asleep on this not long ago. It smells of campfire smoke and sweat. Every useful flashlight. You need one in every mystery game. This wasn't in any of the maps. The torch is lit. Was Al here? Backpack. Full of worn hiking clothes and empty food packets. Nothing valuable here, but still. It seems strange that Al left it behind. Military. Note. If you're reading this, it means I've discovered the entrance to an ancient Roman city hidden deep underground. Its existence is long forgotten. All knowledge of it lost, except in the Latin inscription here. It reads, You who wish to enter the city, Step forth, and be judged. The virtuous shall be rewarded with eternal life in paradise. The wicked shall find themselves showered in gold, but in vain. For this shall be their final resting place. Could an underground city have remained a secret for all this time? Could people have survived down there, against the odds? It seems there's only one way to find out. If I'm not back in an hour, I'm somewhere on the other side. Consider this an invitation. Or a warning. Al Worth. What have you found, Al? These are uh, well preserved. The door just locked behind me. Well, is Al voiced by Liam O'Brien? Actually, not sure. I should go check it out. Well, no way but forward. What? Oh! oh. <sighs> All right, that didn't. I should have. It was a warning, Al. Uh... Al, has Al been through here? Neminis semper vigilabant. Always remember, they're watching. <clears throat> Should dry up for a bit. Everything is. This is. miraculous, and no one's ever found this before. I hear scraping. Who was that?
golden statue. A young Roman woman in a pose of lamentation. What are they lamenting? Filling this pool with their tears. A Roman gladiator mid-stride. What could have made a gladiator flee? That's scraping again. Did that... Did that man just... They're looking at me. Statue still watching me. Oh, were they always like that? Just no, it's it's just my imagination. This was all buried under here. A young Roman woman. It looks like she was begging for her life. these people. Incredible. This could be the fine of the century. This is a warning. Who is that? A Roman military commander, attempting to scramble away from something. Will these people turn into gold? By something? A Roman legionary, in a state of terror. Able to cinema fan, reference to Pompeii. Very similar. People frozen. The moment of their deaths. Did Al come through here? Did he light all these torches? But how did he... There must be a way out. If he were to leave the note out at the door. Did he fall in like I did? A Roman woman who appears to be praying for help that never came. The gods are silent, even today. Is that modern clothes? Is this Al? A golden statue of an old man, wearing modern clothing. This must be Al. But how is that possible? And this rope. Stone tablet. To whoever reads this, I'm sorry you had to find me like this. And worse, she'll suffer the same fate I did. I've spent a lifetime in this place, going around and around in circles, searching for a way out. The inscription was right. There is no way back. And here there are only two options. Death. And that godforsaken doorway into the past. I made the mistake of stepping through it. I wanted to set things right. And I tried. I really tried. Whatever I did, it took me right back to the beginning. Don't make the same mistake. Better to end it all now. And find out what awaits you. Beyond that portal. No. No, there has to be a way out. This can't... I'm not going to give up. There's something wrong with this place. I can feel it. 
did he mean? A young Roman woman in a state of panic. Whispers are coming from there. A Roman man on his knees, as if begging the gods for mercy. Deep breaths. The remains of human, wh whoever it was, died a long, long time ago. This way. An empty lighter? It must be what I used to light all of these torches. Depicting a great circular portal and two women. I wonder who they could be. This is. This is just. What? It's a. It's a man. Everything is. I can't believe my eyes. He was. A golden statue just not a moment ago. These... <laughs> this can't be happening. Uh... Salve, friend. I'm Galerius. Mind telling me who you are and what you were doing in the Shrine of Proserpina? The Shrine of Proserpina? You can understand me. Uh. Wait, are you speaking English? Uh, what? I'm speaking Latin. You are too, although your accent's a little strange. Oh, I see what you did there, changing the subject like that. Nice try. But I'll ask again, who are you and what were you doing in the shrine? Is it a, what am I wearing? I must be I must still be wearing my dress. Shrine of Pros Proserpina? Yeah, you know, agricultural goddess of springtime. You're not from around here, are you? Oh, I'm not from and around you here at all. Just done it again. You're a sly one, aren't you? One more time. Who are you, and what were you doing in that shrine? <laughs> this isn't. This is just a dream. I'm Daisy Barnes, and I've just come from the future. Uh, no idea what you're talking about. Oh, wait. Are you a bit? You know, not right in the head. No. <laughs> That's all right, friend. Everyone's welcome here. Seriously, what is today's date? We sort of lose track of the date down here, but it feels like the beginning of spring to me, so I'd say early March? Spring? What year? It's 817 AUC. Sorry, you look confused. 817 years since the founding of Rome. Which part of the Empire are you from, exactly? So it's 65 CE. CE? No idea what you're talking about. But listen, most folks seem a bit confused when they get here, but you... you seem very lost, and in more ways than one. So let me make this nice and simple for you. 
Live by our law here, and we'll all get along just fine. Your laws? Not laws, law. There's just one, the golden rule. And the punishment for breaking it's... Well, it's kind of horrific. But our magistrate insists we take all newcomers to see him. So I guess I'll let him fill you in. So then, are you coming? I just... It's on my head. I'll just play along. <sighs> I just didn't travel back into time. 65 CE. <clears throat> All right, lead the way. Follow me. When I first arrived, I couldn't believe there were people living down here. But, as you can see, we've got a nice little community now. Only 23 of us at the moment, if you count the three who are missing. No idea how, since nobody knows a way out. But it's just big and dark enough to get lost in, if you're not careful. Aren't you going to introduce me to your pretty new friend, Galerius? Keep it in your loincloth, Aurelia. I'm taking her to see the Magistrate. That pompous old bore won't be Magistrate for much longer. Anyone who helps vote him out today, drinks at my bar for free tonight. Ugh, politics. I'd stay clear of it and her, if I were you. She's... uh It's not my place to say. Down on your right is our farm, where I grow all the food you'll ever want. As long as all you want is leek, cabbage and wheat, Ah, huh. that one usually gets a chuckle. The bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. Ah, don't mind Lydia. She means well. She's just been in a bad place since... Well, you know, I don't know what happened to her. Up here on your right is the chasm. If you've got a weapon, it belongs way down at the bottom. Up on your left is the Forum, where you can visit the market or get yourself patched up in Lucretia's clinic in the Shrine of Apollo. Most of us have almost nothing, just what we had on us when we arrived, and what we've been able to make and scrounge up since. And this central plateau is where the Magistrate and the other patricians live, so don't expect a warm welcome. Hilarious. You're meant to be working the farm, not trudging dirt into the pillars. Take it easy, Horatius. I was just taking our new friend here to see the Magistrate. Well, he's asked me to escort the newcomer personally. The farm. Go. Now. You'd better go with him. But just remember, they're not like you and me. Don't let them use you. What was that? What did you just say? Uh, I said it'll take some getting used to. Yeah, I'm watching you, farm boy. Greetings, citizen. My name's Horatius. Magistrate Sentius asked me to escort you to him personally. Follow me, please. I don't think I'm ever going to get used to this. Will Daisy be one of the, the, the one who sins? <laughs> what is the definition of sin in this city? Is it this Magistrate Sentius that puts it all down into stone? What's this about? I expect the Magistrate wants to brief you about the Golden Rule. It shouldn't take too long. He's busy preparing for the election later today. Election? Hmm. This is all incredibly fascinating and I can't believe my eyes. This is just... But I'm at the same time I'm terrified. I've seen Al. <sighs> Alright. Lead the way. Follow me. The only thing you really need to understand right now is the golden rule. Let me see if I can explain it this way. When I was serving in the Legion, if there was a mutiny brewing in one cohort, the legate in charge wouldn't waste time finding the bad apples among hundreds. They just divided us into groups of ten, made us draw straws, and whoever drew the short straw had to be executed by the other nine. Didn't matter whether he'd done anything wrong. One of us in ten would die for the crimes of the Collective. We call it decimation. If that seems like rough justice to you, you're in for a rude shock. Because the Golden Rule is exactly ten times worse. The Magistrate can explain the rest. He's up these stairs.
good evening, morning, I don't know what day it is. Magistrate? We're finally alone. I assume you already know who I am. May I know your name? D I'm Daisy Barnes. A curious name to match a curious accent. But I digress. I see you have the piercing and astute eyes of Athena. You must be a woman of great learning. We're always happy to welcome another scholar to our little community. Equitia will be delighted to meet you, I'm sure. Now, you're probably wondering why I summoned you, and I'll get to that. But first, take a look at this wondrous place, would you? A secret city built deep in the mountains many hundreds of years ago. It's... It's beautiful. Indeed. More importantly, consider the miraculous community we've built here over the last seven months. Twenty-two complete strangers brought together by the fates, living and working together in our own little paradise. And in all that time, not a single sin has been committed. No fights, no theft, nothing. Have you ever witnessed something so extraordinary as a city without sin? Can't say I have. Nor could I, until I came here. But the reason for this, this miracle, is as simple as it is terrifying. If even one person commits a sin here, every last one of us will die. You see, the builders of this place, whoever they were, left inscriptions warning the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. From what we can gather, breaking the law here will anger the gods and provoke a terrible punishment. Like the curses of Medusa and Midas combined, turning us all to gold. We've come to call it the Golden Rule. It's extraordinary that we've survived as long as we have, and each day I grow more and more afraid that our time in the sun is almost up. And now it seems that day is finally here. All that matters is that somebody in this city is about to break the Golden Rule. Why else would Proserpina send you now? Unless you and I can stop them, our doom is assured. I know that's a lot to take in, and you look like you have questions. Please, ask away. I have so many questions. <laughs> what did you mean when you said Pos Proserpina sent me? You see, in my search for a way to save my people, I learned of an ancient ritual to Proserpina, the goddess of the cycle of life and renewal. It's said to open a doorway in time, so that if the unthinkable happens, one person can pass through it and travel back to the past. And when I saw you arrive in a flash of light from the goddess's shrine, I knew that person was you. You don't belong in our time, do you? Well... <laughs> You're right. I'm from 2,000 years in the future. 2,000 years? That is unfathomable. Please, tell me, in your time, what did you see? What had become of us, of this city? You... You'd all been turned into golden statues. I have imagined it, our downfall, a thousand times. But it still breaks my heart to hear the truth of it. <sighs> 
How does the ritual work? All I can tell you is that it's a ritual sacrifice to Proserpina. I stumbled across instructions. I have to recite a prayer, and of course, as with all rituals, some sacrifice is involved. Usually that means wine or food, or in some cases, a live animal. In this case, the sacrifice is rather more costly. The life of the person performing the ritual. I don't suppose you saw any sign of me in the future? I did see human remains in the temple. Ah, I assume that was me. If I'm forced to perform the ritual, it's going to cost me everything. You'll try to make sure I don't need to use it, won't you? If this is all true, everyone in the city, I. S I'll do my best. Well, I suppose that's all I can ask for. So it counts as a sin here. An intelligent question. There was a good deal of debate about that in our first weeks here. Does it refer to crimes or to some other ill-defined wrong? Of course, everyone agrees on the basics. No theft, no assault, and certainly no murder. But beyond that, it was more difficult to reach a consensus. What about lying, insulting someone, blasphemy, trespass, trying to escape, bribery, infidelity, suicide? As magistrate, I had to exercise leadership, and so I made a decision. We must uphold the laws of the Empire to a standard never before seen. And we must honor the peace of the gods, the sacred accord between the gods and the people of Rome. It is only by offering the gods the proper respect that we may prosper as Rome has for centuries. I know this is what's going in through Daisy's head right now. My head. But if we're gonna solve this, I need to be straight up with him. I'm... I'm not sure if that's a good idea. What is legal isn't always moral. And many of your laws and customs are considered barbaric where I'm from. Barbaric? Barbaric? What are you talking about? The Empire is the most civilizing force in the known world. Rome is a beacon of light in the darkness. For 800 years, she has borne great statesmen, philosophers, poets, artists, and engineers. We have comprehensive laws protecting the rights of our citizens, which have unified countless warring tribes all across the Mediterranean and beyond, from Gallia to Judea. All our citizens are treated the same, regardless of the color of their skin or their sexual preference. Can you say the same? When our people are starving, they are given food rations, and when they are wronged, they have the right to bring the guilty party before the magistrate. Our laws forbid treason, murder, assault, and rape, as well as theft and arson, and so on. No other civilization in the world is so advanced, and you have the, the hubris to call us barbaric? That was... that was the wrong word to use. It's... Time changes. Don't your laws allow slave ownership? Of course. What else would we do with those prisoners of war who would otherwise have been executed? And besides, there are laws for their protection as well. Don't your people watch blood sports for entertainment? On occasion. But our gladiators are almost all volunteers seeking glory, or condemned prisoners who would have been executed anyway. I do not see the harm. 
Don't you persecute Christians? Uh, you mean the blasphemous cult responsible for burning down half of Rome last year? It's hard to blame the people for being angry about that. Don't women have fewer rights than men? Of course, but with fewer rights come fewer responsibilities, and the right to be protected by their fathers and husbands. Rhyme from, we consider those things to be abhorrent. Well, right now, you're a long, long way from home. I have made my pronouncement on the subject. Unfortunately, there are still those here who resist, whispering blasphemous and treasonous lies in the shadows. I would be keeping a close eye on them if I were you. Why can't you investigate? Well, I believe you're in the best position to go around asking people questions. You're new here, and it'll seem perfectly normal. As for me, well, it pains me to say my attempts to impose order have not earned me many friends. I fear I may not even remain magistrate after today's election. The people here would only treat my curiosity with suspicion. You shouldn't have that problem, though. Unless, of course, you get off on the wrong foot. Just like us, I guess. Then I'm going to question why I'm in this garb. Or that I'm not from this city. In your case, fair enough. Well, do you have any suspects? Do you ever stare at a problem for so long that you can't see it for what it is? What's needed here is a fresh pair of eyes. The less I prejudice the independence of your investigation, the better. Well, come on. Tell me at least what you really think. Well, all right. There are those who wish to vote me out of office so that they can pursue their own misguided political agenda. Frankly, their selfishness and recklessness risk destabilizing the entire city. I would be looking very carefully at them if I were you. If... If I do this, will you help me get back to my own time? If I understand Persepina's ritual correctly, that problem should take care of itself. Let me see if I can explain. If you manage to prevent the sin that breaks the Golden Rule, I won't need to bring you here. I won't create the portal, and you will never have been able to come here. Thus, you'll have created a paradox. If this occurs, you should be flung back to your own time, having changed the past for all of us. Make sense? Time travel... No, time travel does not make sense. But if you never summoned me, then this would never have happened. That's that's why it's a paradox. I don't know what's really going on here, but... Sure, why not? I think that's all the questions I had. Ah, good. So, are you with me? Can I count on you to figure out who's about to break the Golden Rule? How do you even know that someone was? It doesn't seem like I have much choice. No, I don't suppose you do. But I'm hoping that even if you're not burdened with a sense of self-sacrifice, you'll at least see the sense in self-preservation. Good point. I don't know what to feel, really. All of this is incredible, but at the same time, so utterly terrifying. But I'm in. Wonderful. Now, 
I need you to investigate the city, talk to everyone, help them if it will win their trust. I authorize you to enter private homes and inspect possessions and documents, unless of course you're asked to leave. Figure out who the culprit is, and as soon as you have a name, come back and tell me immediately. All right. I mentioned there are more than 20 people here. I'd best get started. Oh, and one last thing. If I were you, I'd start my investigation by visiting Lucretia at the Shrine of Apollo in the Forum. I heard wailing from there not long ago. Seems like something's not right. I'll get right to... I'll get right on it. I don't need any lead I can get at this time. This is incredible. They'd really step back into time. This is all real. So the solution is to create a time paradox and then this would never have happened. First, I think we should check out the Shrine of Apollo. It did authorize me that I could look at anyone's messages. Centilla, the sensuous. May Jupiter Optimus Maximus continue to protect and guide you. Thank you for making me your daughter and for the lovely birthday pendant. I promise I will wear it always. I feel so safe and fortunate to have you as my father and Sensha as my sister. I sense you've been feeling apprehensive about the election next month. But if you can just show them the strong and dependable man I know you to be, you will be re-elected. I'm sure of it. The Sensius adopted someone. I should keep a note of all this. Sensius adopted Centilia. A lararium, a, a, a small household shrine where ancient Romans offered daily prayers for protection. Hmm. A chest. Stealing is going to turn me into gold, I believe. I should leave things where they are. This is all... As beautiful as a sinless city sounds, it's... Do we really have that much faith in human nature? Don't we commit sin by accident? I wish Horatius would stop letting barbarians in here. Bar ba what do you want? Do I? I'm an outsider, I guess. Oh, good afternoon. What's your story? I'm here investigating the matter of the... I'm Sentia, eldest daughter of the Magistrate. Ah. But you'd know that if you'd been invited in here and introduced properly. What are you doing in here? And why are you dressed like that? Ah, so you're Sencha. Charming. <laughs> I 
What do you think about the Golden Rule, Sensha? You know, some people say it's the creation of an all-seeing god who's watching everything we do. But what kind of an awful, incompetent god would let my sister go missing on his or her watch? Your sister's missing. Fair question. Did you hear that? Curse you, you coward! Where is my sister? What do you have to say for yourself? No response. Nothing. <laughs> That's what I thought. Well, at least we know blasphemy doesn't break the golden rule. I'm telling you, this mysterious god of ours has to be asleep on the job. Either that, or like people are saying, it really is just a children's fable my father is exploiting to frighten us into behaving. I suppose we'll find out sooner or later. Hmm, I suppose we will. Do you know a way out of here? Ugh, what is it with you people? You heard the rumor that my little sister escaped and figure I must know a way out too. Is that it? Well, that's just a stupid rumor. We have no idea what happened to Centilla. I wish you mouth breathers would just leave me alone. Can I help look for your sister and find out what happened to her? I don't know. Can you? Can you tell me how a person could have disappeared from a city with no exits and no crime? Was she snatched away by the harpies? Your father didn't mention any of this when I spoke to him. Any idea why? That doesn't surprise me. To him, it was like a prized cow wandering off from its paddock. He's upset, of course, but he says he's too busy with the election to help look for her. So he's letting Horatius do the heavy lifting. Some good that's done. When did you last see her? <sighs> it was three weeks ago. We ate our evening meal together, and I remember she seemed happy. In love. We went into our rooms, I went to sleep, and when I woke up, she was gone. That's it. She was seeing someone. I think so, yes. But she was very careful about keeping his identity a secret, even from me. Why is that? Because our father had plans to marry her off, eventually, and even a rumor about her attachment to some mystery man might have ruined those plans. I see. Just a moment. So you have Sencha. Daughter of Magistrate. You have a sister of Centilia. Seeing someone? And went missing. Centilia was meant to be married off. Is there a sin somewhere there? Such recklessness may lead one to sin, I would say. Is it possible her lover was involved? I don't know, but it's been three weeks since she disappeared and he hasn't come forward. That might speak to a guilty conscience. All I know is, whoever he is, he's still here in the city. The lover's still here in the city, then. <laughs> That's all the questions I had for now. So you'll help me find her? I'll do it. Oh, thank you. You should probably take a look through her room. It's the one just by the front door. Maybe you'll find something the rest of us missed. I'll see what I can do. But first, I have to investigate the... 
Thanks. Pressing matter at the Shrine it. of Apollo. All right, another time. I just have to double check something. Centilia is the adoptive daughter? Yes. She did seem remarkably calm. On your best behavior, I trust. Well, good day to you, Horatius. What now? What's your story? I'm a legionary of the first Italica, but there's not a lot of fighting down here. So the magistrate has assigned me other duties. I act as the magistrate's right hand man. Keeping an eye on his daughters. Uh, daughter, I should say. And the others. And making sure they're all behaving. I also keep a register of new arrivals. How did you end up here? I'm from Liguria, up north originally. I was doing alright for myself. Twelve years into my service. Had a nice girl lined up for when it was all over. Not anymore. She's probably figured I'm long gone and moved on by now. Try not to think about it. My commander sent me to deliver a message to Rome. While I was there, I thought I'd do something nice for my girl and pick up a little pendant from a silversmith. That's when the crowd started flooding through the streets, shouting fire, people screaming, trampling each other. Then some genetric and future chill tried to take advantage of the chaos and pinch my pendant. I remember chasing him through the crowds, down towards the river, and then nothing. Blacked out and woke up near here. No idea how I ended up floating so far down river. But I'm fortunate to be alive, I suppose. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Ah, don't be. As Seneca the Younger said, difficulty strengthen the mind as labor does the body. That said, Centilla's disappearance has been more difficult than I'd care to admit. What can you tell me about the Magistrate? He's one of the better commanders I've ever had, that's for sure. Good stoic. Lives by Seneca's words. Treat your inferior as you would wish your superior to treat you. Can't ask for much more than that. Do you have any ideas about how to get out of here? I went around asking the same questions when I first arrived. Never did find a way out. But I learned how to accept my situation. To bear trials with a calm mind robs misfortune of its strength and burden. That's from Seneca the Younger, if you're interested. What do you think about the Golden Rule? Well, as I always say, it's kind of like a divine version of the practice of decimation in the Legion. By threatening to execute one in ten men. The idea is to ensure order and discipline among everyone, and it works. If you knew you could be executed because your brother-in-arms is planning a mutiny, well, you'd bloody well watch him like Hundred-Eyed Argus, wouldn't you? Because your only chance of saving yourself is to stop bad things before they happen. It makes us all responsible for keeping each other in check. It's brutal, of course, but effective. The Legion wouldn't be the most formidable force in the world without it. Gonna refresh chat here. I'm not sure if it's internet's being weird. Well, are you saying you're in favor of it? Sounds like it. What's done is done. I was forced to execute my brothers in arms, and those memories will always visit me in my sleep. Life is harsh, and I've come to accept my lot. As with the Golden Rule, I don't have any control over it. So railing against it would be like trying to stop the seasons or the tides. As Seneca the Younger wrote, True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. Not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, 
but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient, for he that is so wants nothing. You have a lot of Seneca then. Let's talk about something else. If you like. When in Rome. Can we talk about Centilia? What business is that of yours? I'm looking for her. A lot of people have been looking for her. But it's been three weeks, and we've found nothing. What makes you think you can do better? Missing for three weeks. Sometimes fresh eyes help. Hmm. I suppose that's true. Did you notice anything suspicious before she went missing? Centilla was always a kind, well-behaved young woman. I admit, her disappearance really caught me off guard. If anyone knows something, I'd expect it to be Centia, Maliolus, Claudia, or Domitius. But none of them will tell me anything. You might fare better, though, I suppose. Malaeus. I took them out, Centilia. Thank you. Let's talk about something else. Fine. Can I see the citizen register? So we can keep track of what we need to talk to. Not. Just make sure I get it back by tomorrow. Thank you. This will be very useful. Aurelia, Claudia, Decius, Domitius, Duilius, Equitia, Fabia, Galerius, Georgius, Hannibal, Horatius, Cabash, Julia, Livia, Lucretia, Malayolos, Malayolos, Navia, Octavia, Rufius, Sensha, Centilia, Sensius, Ulpius, Virgil. That's a lot of people to look through. Hopefully you can catch the one who's going to commit the golden... break the golden rule. But how does he know that someone is going to break the rule? How does he know that calamity is going to happen? Thank you. Of course. I'll be going now. All right. Please keep an eye out for anything that might lead us to Centella. This is Centilla's room. Brass mirror. The brass has been polished into a rudimentary mirror, which has been used for applying makeup. small vial containing a rudimentary perfume made from flowers and oil. Brass jar containing some sort of powder for makeup. Perhaps she's been prettying up for her lover. Ink jar. A ceramic ink jar. The ink appears to be made from soot and water. note. Centilia, to Sensius and Sensia, may Clementia give you the strength to forgive me. I am sorry to have to leave you this way, but I have found a way to escape, and I must take it. I hope we meet again someday. Is escaping from the city considered a sin? For if one leaves and abandons the collective, losing faith in it, is that not bad for the collective? We need to find her before she leaves. Be careful not to steal anything. Hmm. Uh, 
I'll ask your father about it later. First, I need to catch up at the Shrine of Apollo. Citizen? Magistrate? Fresh meat, huh? What were you two talking about? Sorry, Corgold. Chat isn't reaching me? Let me double check. Oh. Okay. It doesn't seem. Chat seems to be. The last message I saw was uh, from you, Corgol. They really voice acted everything really impressive. Corgol, you said chat isn't reaching you. And potato dialogues. What did you say the ink was made of? I'll double check that. Let's see who this is, this gladiator. Sorry, what? Don't play dumb. I saw you. Having a shady little chat with old man Sentius up on his balcony. If he's making a last ditch effort to pick up votes by talking to a woman, he's even more senile than I thought. Everyone knows women can't vote. Thanks for the warm welcome. I'll be going now. Potato dialogues. The ink. Citizen. Soot and water. That's what she used to pen her message. Are they? Voice again. Is that is that Persepia? Keep getting the name wrong. Persepia? With these just with these actual people. People have sinned. Displayed as a reminder to everyone else. Give me a moment. Sorry I'm such a mess. I just lost a patient and a dear friend. Julia. She was a good woman. I I was hoping to chat. Should I come back later? No, no, now is fine. I can't afford to wallow here. And I need the distraction. What's on your mind? What happened here? She was poisoned. She came in here frothing at the mouth. Normally I'd treat her with resin of sylphium, a rare plant which is perfect for this sort of thing. And I knew Dacius had some at his market stall, right around the corner. So I ran over there, but he just looks at me with this evil smile and says, That'll be a thousand denarii. There was no way I could afford that, and he knew it. Then that toad shrugs and says, Supply and demand. I guess you don't value your friend's life that highly. Anywhere else, I'd just pay a thug to steal it from his stall. But there's no way I can do that down here, with the golden rule. So all I could do is come back here and just watch her die. 
I kept on apologizing. And now I'll never know who poisoned her or how they managed to do it without breaking the golden rule or why she cursed that snake's cruel black eyes with her dying breath. Julia cursed that snake's cruel black eyes. Is there something I can do to help? Well, unless you have the power to bring someone back from the dead, there's really just one thing you can do. Get me that silphium resin. I'm going to have another patient in here soon. Could be in the next day or in the next hour. And I will not allow this to happen again. I don't care how you get it, but you have to make it happen. Because if I lose another patient this way, I swear to the gods below, not even the golden rule will stop me from marching up to that genetic Fututo and scratching his eyes out. Understand this. I'll get right on it. Well, come back if you get sick or injured. Day or night, I'll do what I can. Large stone statue of Apollo, the Roman and Greek god of deceased and healing, among other things. A wooden rack containing various dried and ground substances. The mortar and pestle haven't changed much in the last two millennia. A collection of barbaric looking medical implements, including forceps and shears. May Apollo keep you safe. My apologies, Lucretia, but if I'm to find out what happened to Yulia and catch her killer, which then, if she was truly poisoned, how has everyone not turned into gold yet? May Apollo keep you safe. Did Yulia have any effects? There's the merchant. Salve. Yes, yes. Left behind by the founders of the city. Or Pierce the Thief stole my purse and I... Whoever wrote this did not get to finish. Salve, stranger, and welcome to our idyllic little slice of the Empire. I'm Dacius. Terrible shame what happened to Yulia. But we just have to carry on, don't we? What's your story, Dacius? You mean how did I end up here? That is a lengthy tale. Let's hear it. All right. Well, you see, I'm in the business of procuring rare and precious objects liberated from the enemies of Rome. Mostly sculptures, vases, the occasional slave, fetch a magnificent price in Roman high society. Have myself a nice little shop in Rome, just off the Forum. Lots of foot traffic and close to the docks. Good place to be when the fires broke out. See, about seven months ago, half of Rome caught on fire. Everyone who couldn't get to an outer gate was running for the river, hoping to escape by barge. So I gathered my coins and some priceless vases into a cart and had my most loyal slave girl, pretty young thing named Acampha, push it for me. All the way down to the river, I'm elbowing for a stampede of people, turning back now and then to make sure she hasn't legged it with my valuables. But, to my surprise, we make it, and I see this barge loading up, and it's so full it's almost sinking. But the captain's happy to take my coin, so I start boarding, and then he puts his hand on my chest and he says, No, too heavy. The cart or the girl? So I did what anyone would have done. 
You chose the cart, didn't you? Of course I chose the cart. I mean, I can always buy a new slave girl, if I still have my money. So I put me hand in the cart, and I guess you realise what was happening, because those pretty black eyes of hers go all wide. And in one swift motion, she topples a whole bloody thing into the Tiber. So you took her with you after all? No, I dived in after it, of course. Aren't you paying attention? That was a bloody fortune. Only, I guess I must have hit my head or something, because everything went black. When I came to, I'd washed up on the riverbank, not far from here, with nothing in the world but a single silver coin. <laughs> well, it sounds like you got what you deserved. I couldn't agree more. I mean, sure, I'd lost a few thousand denarii, but I've already made it back, and this place is a veritable treasure trove. That's not what I mean. Look meant. around you. There must be more gold in here than in the treasury of Rome. If I can just figure out how to get it out of here. Well, do you have any ideas about how to get out of here? I'm afraid not. If you're desperate, I did hear that Aurelia down at the tavern claims to know of a way out, but I'm not sure I trust her. Some people here are a little shady for my liking. So Aurelia might know a way out. <laughs> Shady for your liking? Really, I hadn't noticed. Oh yeah, gotta watch out. Old Dacius has got your back though. What do you think about the golden rule, Decius? It's terrible for inflation is what it is. There's so much gold just lying around, it's practically worthless. At least down here. Of course, I have an idea for generating real wealth, but what I need is a bow. Just a simple composite bow. I've scoured this city from top to bottom with no luck. But if you happen to find one, bring it to me and we'll talk. Has it the Magistrate banned weapons? Oh, well, technically yes, but that just means you'll need to be a little discreet. That would break the golden rule, I believe. I'm not getting you a bow. No need to decide on anything yet. Just sleep on it, yeah? Well, I need some Silphium Resin. If I get you the bow, will you give me some Silphium Resin? Certainly. All I ask is a reasonable price of a thousand denarii. You're price gouging over life-saving medicine. What is wrong with you? Oh, it's perfectly legal. Simply a question of supply and demand, I'm afraid. Take it or leave it. Did you hear that? Hear what? Never mind. Ah, uh, are you sure you're feeling all right? If you're hearing things, perhaps you should pay a visit to Lucretia's clinic. We don't want another Navia on our hands. Navia? What happened to Navia? Well, she claimed the statue was a whispering to her. Nobody else could hear it. Then she shut herself in the palace and we never heard from her again. But I digress. Do you want this Sylphium or not? To Navia. Maybe hearing the same whispers I am. Stuck in the temple. I... How would I come up with a thousand denarii? That's hardly my concern. But if you get a job, work hard and save your coins, you should be able to afford it within, say, five years? Correct. I don't have that kind of money. Very well. Perhaps I can interest you in something within your budget? No, I'll be going now, thank you. Very well. Another time. Where is the Silphium Resin? The cheeky bastard probably just has it out in the open. Knowing that nobody's going to steal it. A 
bottle of Silphium Resin, an extremely valuable ancient Roman remedy for various, various afflictions. Can't steal it. Damn the whole city. They find you a bow, Decius. People need that medicine. But if I... If I arm this bastard with a bow... What's he going to even do with it? This web grows even more tangled. Any one of these people... Are just a step away from committing whatever sin it is. Potato dialogues. We don't even have a thousand denarii in Pendragon. This guy. <laughs> no, no, I can't. The bow might be the best way to get some medicine, but no, I'm getting sidetracked here. I need to find out who's going to commit a sin. A magistrate knows it's one of these people. But if I don't solve this... Lucretia in the temple... That's her name, yes? She may just steal the Silphium herself. But she wouldn't, will she? It's golden rule, it's... Uh... Help! You have to do something! A man arrived in the baths. A real nasty sort, with his face all covered up. And he's got a weapon. You have to do something, or he's gonna break the golden rule. Oh, shoot. Well, thank you for the follow, Captain Panda. Oh, your stream? Thank you for the host, Captain Panda. Why is my alert box not showing anything? Thank you for tuning in, everyone, who are just coming in today. We are playing the Forgotten City right now. I'm just getting to know the populace. I'm trying to find out who is going to be committing a sin. Because if one person does, everyone here will turn into gold. So I'm trying to prevent that. The magistrate performed a ritual which grabbed me from the future. And he's relying on me to investigate these people. And he sanctioned me. So I'd be able to move, look into their homes, read their messages, rifle through their things, to hopefully find the would-be culprit. Now my big question is, how does this magistrate know that something is going to happen? And of course, there is the other big question of what really is a sin in this world? Who defines that? Is it a god? Is it written down in stone? A woman was apparently just poisoned earlier. But the fact that everyone is still standing... Well, the fact that everyone is still flesh... Was it really a poisoning? Does, did it count as a sin? If it was indirect? These are things we'll have to find out, but... I'm just trying to meet everyone now, and so far... The web continues to get tangled. And now this person is asking for help. Thanks for stopping by, Captain Panda. Uh, good luck with your work. I'll try to keep things brief here. Wait, um, who are you? Fabia, but now's not the time. Are you going to help or not? Uh, how do I help? I don't have a weapon. No. This man might be trouble. I'll get right on it. Thank you. He's still in there. Somewhere. I have to hide. Find me in this empty shrine when it's over. No. The voice it. Did you... Did you hear that? No, of course not. Maybe we... Is this voice guiding me? Is this... Hmm. 
Did you hear that? Hear what? <laughs> I heard a voice whisper no. What? We don't have time for this. I have to go. Never mind. I don't know why I would say that. The shrine is collapsing. Bloody hell. The voice. The voice just saved my life. Anyone? Oh, no! Oh God, she's dead. Did anyone see that? The whole shrine just collapsed on her. Oh Fabiat, why did you have to go in there? Poor sweet girl. I can't believe she is dead. Fabia, I mean. She walked into that empty shrine, and the next moment she is lying dead under a pile of rubble. The gods are cruel and unjust. She was like a daughter to me. I'm sorry, friends. It's not right for me to lay my burden upon you. I I'm sorry for your loss. Beware, shrine may collapse at any moment. Are you whispering to me through these statues? Whoever you are. A sculpture of an unknown Greek general, his helmet pulled up off his head. A Greek statue, probably of the goddess to whom this temple is dedicated. Perhaps a local Greek resident knows more about her. Confront the armed man entering the city. How am I going to stop an armed man? Why isn't Horatius doing something? Why isn't the magistrate doing anything? I feel like I'm walking into my doom. Stop right there. I am looking for Tiberius Quinctius Crispus. Otherwise known as Quinctius. Do you know where he is? I don't know a Quintius. I'm not sure I believe that, so allow me to explain something to you. I am here with orders from Emperor Nero himself to find and execute the cultist Quinctius for terrible crimes against the Empire. So, if you tell me the truth, I will allow you to live. But if you lie to me, or otherwise obstruct the Emperor's business in any way, I will put this arrow through your chest. Is that understood? Got it. Thank you. Now tell me, who are you people, and what is this place? I'm not from around here. Why don't you put that bow down and you can come in and see for yourself? Oh, how very welcoming of you. You want me to let my guard down, is that it? You're not going to get your claws into me. I was told Quintius was a cultist, but I never thought he'd be foolish enough to lead me right to the heart of his mystery cult. What mystery cult are you talking about? I'm not from here. Oh, don't play coy with me. I don't care if you're worshipping Bacchus, Magna Mater, or Christ. You lot are all the same to me. Always sneaking off to your secret sanctuaries, indoctrinating each other with your little mantras. The Emperor may have tolerated your activities up until now, but after what Quinctius did, those days are numbered. Yeah, Captain Panda, this was this was a standard this was a mod for Skyrim and there it had over three million downloads. I never knew about it until I found this game. So yeah, it was a mod and by around roughly I think three or four people. Developed by three or four people over years. 
won a National Writers Guild Award. And now it's a standalone game. Very much feels like a Bethesda game. So the DNA is in there, but they got it fully voiced. They set it in ancient Rome. They consulted with historians. And we're experiencing it now. But this guy... You've got the wrong idea. We're not cultists. You say that, but if you're I'm not, not a, a cult, cult, then why go to such great lengths to keep this place a secret? How did you get it? I'm still looking for a way out. So you admit you're not allowed to leave. It's not that we're not. <laughs> it's not that we're not allowed to leave. We physically cannot leave. There's no way out. Threatening me is not going to help you, but in any case, that sounds an awful lot like a cult to me. And I saw the inscription saying, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. I take it this is some kind of mantra you all believe? <sighs> it's not a mantra. It's a warning. Uh, a distinction without a difference. You've clearly been indoctrinated into this nonsense. Now tell me, where did you lot get enough gold to make all these statues? They were once people who were turned to gold as punishment. You lot are practicing human sacrifice too. You people disgust me. Yo. You're distorting what I said. Yes, yes, because I'm the real villain here. It's all clear to me now. The secret sanctuary, the indoctrination, the mantra, the human sacrifice. You're cultists. There's no doubt in my mind. What baffles me is how a person can believe in something with such zeal. They just can't see what they've become. However, you still have a chance to redeem yourself by telling me where Quintius is. Do not waste it. I don't know where Quintius is. Is that the Magistrate? Am I forgetting something? I have no idea who or where he is. <sighs> then you're of no use to me. Do you have any last words? Whoa, whoa. You said you wouldn't kill me if I told you the truth. And there's a simple explanation for that. I lied. But if you want to know the truth before you die, here it is. Once I'm done with you and Quintius, I intend to kill every last one of you wretched degenerates. And I can think of nothing I'd enjoy more. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. What is... What is going on? Everyone is... No, no, no. The portal, portal. These things are just trying to kill me. Is it this way? Yes, it's this way, this way. Bloody hell. Don't look back, don't look back. Uh. Is that you in my head, Proserpina?
A relief depicting a great circular portal and Proserpina, the Roman goddess of the cycle of life and renewal. Her story is a grim one. It's said she was abducted by Pluto and forced into marriage against her will. Sounds awfully familiar. Much like Centilia, forced into marriage and now eloping with her lover. Did we truly... Did we go back in time? Uh, salve, friend. I'm Galerius. Mind telling me who you are and what you were doing in the Shrine of Proserpina? I'm Daisy Barnes, and we've had this conversation before. Uh, I don't think so. I've never seen you before in my life. Your name is Galerius, and you're about to offer to take me to see Sentius so he can tell me about the Golden Rule. Oh, Bacchus, how much did I drink last night? Uh, sorry to have bothered you. No problem, I have to go. Oh, and since you seem to be in a hurry, you should try out this device I made. Worked real hard on it. Device? A zip line Just handlebar. Just attach the pulley to the rope over the lake and hang onto the handles. If it works, it'll be faster than walking. And if it doesn't work, the worst thing that can happen is you'll take a swim in the lake. I haven't quite summoned the courage to test it myself. But don't worry, it's completely safe. Probably. Thank you. I'll be going now. All right. See you around. Zip line. Oh. He's been drinking. I don't trust him. Where was I? That man, he just shot an arrow at me. I can't confront him. If things truly did. happen as they if I did go back in time then oh these are the voices of the people in the statues no no this Does the Magistrate know about this? I have to tell him. I have to tell him about the Assassin. Keep an eye out for Centilla, would you? What? Horatius remembers? What is it, citizen? Is it not... Alright. If I went back in time, he shouldn't have recognized me, and I, I stand out in this job. Do you remember me? Magistrate. We're finally alone. I assume you already know who I am. May I know your name? I'm Daisy Barnes, and we've had this conversation before. We have? Wait, if I understand correctly, someone is about to break the Golden Rule, forcing me to create a portal in time to bring you here? I must have entrusted you with figuring out who the culprit is. Only, I assume, we failed. And you had to start over. Is that about right? If so... What happened? I broke it. I couldn't stop it from being broken. Ah, I see. Look, it's unfortunate. But all that matters now is that you make use of what you've learned and gathered and do better next time. Now, I assume you sought me out again for a reason. <coughs> 
Can I tell him about the... Can we talk about who's going to break the golden rule? Of course. What is it? Uh, there is a... No, I... I triggered that. If I don't ever meet that man, he's just going to... There has to be a way to stop him. I need more time to investigate. Why then did you say... Oh, it doesn't matter. It looks like you'll have to continue your investigation. Now, was there anything else you wanted to ask? Ask them. Good. Now, was there something else you wanted to discuss? So I can't tell you about the man... ...who's here to kill us when orders by Emperor Nero. Thank you. I'll be waiting here for news. I need to stop him. How? Ugh, this place has become a thoroughfare. Do you remember who I am, Sensha? Ugh, I wish Horatius would stop letting barbarians in here. What do you want? I guess you don't remember me. Can we talk about Centilia? Oh, you heard about her disappearance, I take it. Well, I found a letter in her room which mentioned her plan to escape. What? Really? I swear, I searched her room top to bottom and never saw that. I wonder how I could have missed it. Strange, but well done, I suppose. But it's odd. It was only a few months ago that Santilla's friend Yulia let slip she was planning an escape of her own. Yeah. And yet, Yulia's still here. You should go and speak with her. Find out if she knows anything. She lives in the villa next door. Yulia, she was poisoned. Maybe I can get to Yulia before she's poisoned. Keep an eye out for Santella, would you? Hey, Horatius. How does it feel knowing your man's doomed to lose the election today? If you're trying to goad me into an argument, it won't work. I'm a stoic, remember? If the old man couldn't even keep his own daughter safe, how can anyone trust him to keep us safe, eh? Why do I get the feeling you lot had something to do with Santilla's disappearance? That's it. Blame everyone but yourself. If I find out you did something to that poor sweet girl, not even the Golden Rule is going to protect you. Got it? Huh. As if I'll be afraid of you, little man. The city's a powder keg. Sensuous and Maleolus. Same excrement, different smell. Someone's not happy. I still have the items from the past. They're still with me. If this is a... I still have to confirm if time loops when I commit a sin. I just have to escape. Then I can take the medicine. Escape with my life. And return with it. Is that how this works? Quintius, Quintius. What was Quintius' full name again? I heard that from... I heard the voice from here. A new face. 
Arveg, and may Vesta watch over you. I'm Equitia. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? What's your story? Oh my. I take it people are quite direct where you're from. I suppose it's quite charming in its own way. Usually, however, you wouldn't simply march up to a Vestal Priestess and without due formality or courtesy ask, what is your story? She's a Vestal Priestess. Sorry, what should I have done? The proper approach would be to arrange an introduction through a mutual acquaintance in high office, by which time you would already know how to address me. And then you would find a way to satisfy your curiosity rather more indirectly. But to be honest, I've often thought what an unnecessarily formal way to communicate that is. So let's do it your way. You just keep being yourself and ask whatever you like. It'll be a refreshing change. I have heard about you vessel priestesses. But perhaps the history books may be wrong. What would you say a Vestal Priestess is? You really don't know. You are from far away, aren't you? Well, I am one of the Priestesses charged with keeping the sacred flame in Rome's shrine of Vesta burning. I take it you know who Vesta is? Remind me. Vesta is the mother goddess of hearth and home, and the guardian of the Roman people. How did a Vestal Prince, how did a Vestal Priestess end up here? You know, I'm not entirely sure. But what about you? How did you end up here? A young woman named Karen dragged me out of her river, unconscious, and sent me in here. Karen, you say? And nothing about that name seemed odd to you. It's an older name, but not uncommon where I'm from. Older? I see. Hmm. I wonder if... No. Excuse me, what were you going to say? I apologize. I don't mean to be cryptic. It's just that you've got me thinking. Have you spoken with any of the others about how they arrived here too? I really think you should. Go around and ask them what they remember, and see if you notice any patterns. Alright, I'll do that. Good. Thank you. But please, be careful. I just don't want to see what happened to Livia happen to you, too. What happened to Livia? Up until a few weeks ago, she was a perfectly productive member of our little community, darning clothes and cutting hair. She was always so chatty, always seeking out newcomers and asking them where they were from and how they wound up here. And then, about a month ago, she suddenly changed. She withdrew, stopped working and became despondent, started muttering to herself. Galerius and I visited her to see how we could help, but she just looked at us with this haunted stare, called us bloodless shadows, and told us we were ignorant of some pattern. Look, it could be unrelated. Perhaps she simply fell ill. Or, as Galerius suggested, the weight of the golden rule was too much for her. But there is a small chance that she learned something, saw a pattern nobody else saw, and that it broke her. I just don't want to see that happen to you. So be careful, will you? I'll be careful. Thank you. Now, go and follow the thread of truth through this labyrinth, and come back to me if you discover any patterns. I'll see what I can do. I've been asking everyone, but do you know a way out of here? I don't, I'm afraid. It seems to me we're exiled here until the gods judge us, one way or another. And what do you think of the Olden Rule? 
I'm quite sure it's the work of the gods, which is strange because they've never been particularly concerned with our misdeeds, as long as we've kept the peace of the gods. We asked for blessings, for good health, bountiful harvest, military victory, and in return, we offer praise, wine, incense, or animals. But here, it seems they require much more of us. I find myself reminded of an especially pertinent tale from our great poet Ovid in his epic, Metamorphoses. Would you like to hear it? It is rather long. Why not? I have time. If time will repeat itself, I do have time. Wonderful. It goes like this. Baucis and Philemon were an old married couple living a humble life in a small town. One night, the town gets a visit from a couple of vagrants. They go from door to door, asking for a place to stay the night. Of course, being vagrants, they're turned away sharply from house after house, a thousand in all. Until finally they come to the little cottage where Baucis and Philemon lived. Now the kind old couple had very little to offer, but nevertheless, they invite these strangers into their house and offer them food, wine, and a place to stay. Immediately, the guests make themselves at home. They begin gulping down the old couple's wine, so much so that Baucis, the old lady, begins to worry they're going to run out. And then she notices something strange. Her wine pitcher keeps refilling itself, as if by magic, realizing only a select few possess such powers. Says to her husband, Philemon, I think these men are gods in disguise. Immediately the couple begins apologizing for offering such coarse wine, and the vagrants metamorphosize and reveal themselves to be Jupiter, the king of the gods, and Mercury, the trickster god. They confide they didn't mind the meager offerings. They were just pleased that someone in the town offered them hospitality. Then Jupiter says to them, you have passed our test. But everyone else in this city failed, so we are going to destroy this place and everyone in it, except you, who we will grant a wish. So old Baucis and Philemon escape up into the mountains safely, and they receive their wish, which is for eternity together. Meanwhile, Jupiter carries through with his threat and wipes that city off the map. Some say the moral of that story is that we must all honor the sacred rituals of guest friendship, the reciprocal obligations owed between hosts and guests. But I like to think it's that we should always show compassion for those less fortunate than ourselves. Indeed. Even if not everyone has a luxury of offering hospitality, it's... Giving your kindness is enough. Or uh, perhaps it's that the gods might kill you at any moment for failing their test, and they don't even have to tell you what the rules are. There are no gods. I agree. There is something to, to be learned from that story. I'm pleased to hear it. What's the status of the election? It must be completed by dusk. Just the same as any other official business. It'll be between Sentius, the incumbent, and Maliolus, the challenger. Why do you ask? What's your role in this election? I'm responsible for announcing it and making sure the procedures are followed. And who is allowed to vote? All of the male citizens who are willing and able to attend. Unless they're running, of course. The women can't vote. Hmm. That's just the way it's always been, I'm afraid. It never sat right with me, either. There are some women who can vote. Vestal priestesses like myself. But in this case, given my role overseeing the election, I've decided to abstain. I can't allow the perception that I'm being anything but fair and independent. But if it's any consolation, there are other ways to influence the outcome of an election. Such as? By using whatever gifts the gods gave you. Nothing untoward, of course. Can I nominate another candidate? You can. 
assuming they're eligible and willing to accept the nomination. Good to know. Let's talk about something else. Certainly. I've been asking about how they wound up here. I've been asking people about how they wound up here. And did you notice anything? A pattern? Well, nothing yet. Oh, well then. Keep asking people how they wound up here. I don't want us to rush to any conclusions yet. Livia's fate weighs heavily on my mind and dictates we should be sure. Yes, you should ask the others first. I'll be going now. Come back to me once you've acquainted yourself with the rest of our neighbors. So another thing that really drew me to this game, I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with the comic called Britannia. It's also set in ancient Rome and one of the main characters there is a Vestal Priestess. And she saves the main character and introduces him to the Codex. It may seem magical, but it's basically a book on psychology of the human mind. And this man became the first detective. I really love the comic, actually. It is really good. Check it out, Britannia. It's the voices again. I'm seeing butterflies, golden butterflies. I would probably be executed for rifling through a Vestal Priestess's belongings. But I have sanction from the... I'm not gonna steal. I have sanction from the Magistrate. There's a lot to explore here in the city. I can't... Oh. Fear oh, is proof of a degenerate mind. Keeping an eye on things, Horatius? As always, Priestess. Any news about Centilla, Navia, or Kabash? No sign of any of them, I'm afraid. But we do have a newcomer. Strangely dressed woman. Pretty, though. Funny accent, too. A traveler from a faraway land, then? Seems that way. Then let's make sure she feels welcome, shall we? Of course, Priestess. <laughs> I'm right here. Julia's still alive. May I talk to her, Lucretia? What are you doing in here? Can't you see this woman is dying? She's been poisoned. She needs the resin of a plant called Silphium, but that cool as Cubolates Decius won't give it to me. I'm sorry, I wish it could help, and I'm not exactly sure how this time loop works yet. I can't risk stealing the medicine. It's too late. She just slipped away. What happened? She was poisoned. She came in here frothing at the mouth. Normally I'd treat her with resin of silphium, a rare plant which is perfect for this sort of thing. And I knew Decius had some at his market stall, right around the corner. So I ran over there, but he just looks at me with this evil smile and says, That'll be a thousand denarii. There was no way I could afford that, and he knew it. Then that toad shrugs and says, Supply and demand. I guess you don't value your friends like that highly. Anywhere else, I'd just pay a thug to steal it from his stall. But there's no way I can do that down here with the golden rule. So all I could do is come back here and just watch her die. I kept on apologizing. And now I'll never know who poisoned her. Or how they managed to do it without breaking the golden rule. Or why she cursed that snake's cruel black eyes with her dying breath. Well, unless you have the power to bring someone back from the dead, there's really just one thing you can do. Get me that silphium resin 
I'm going to have another patient in here soon. Could be in the next day or in the next hour. And I will not allow this to happen again. I don't care how you get it, but you have to make it happen. Because if I lose another patient this way, I swear to the gods below, not even the golden rule will stop me from marching up to that genetic Kamfututo and scratching his eyes out. We'll see what I can do. I'll be going now. Well, come back if you get sick or injured. Day or night, I'll do what I can. You pretty much said the same things. <sighs> Yulia, how did he break the golden... Or was it an accidental poisoning? Was it a loophole in the law? Whatever's in that great temple up there on the bluff, I bet it's worth a fortune. Don't even think about it. I could just take this. Now I need to find out more about this. I... Wait against the current. I can't assume time will just reset itself. I can't... No, I... I can't approach that man. Not now. What's this? Dooley? I did not do it. Well. Hello? Uh. Hello? <laughs> and what's your story, stranger? My name's Dooley. I live here now because I got in trouble and they, they said they had to lock me up. What did you do? If you, if you sinned, then everyone should have turned to gold. I don't know. I don't remember things so good. I think it's just because I was looking for treasure. Did somebody think you were going to steal? Yes. But I wasn't. I was just looking. This is why this doesn't work. Is that all? They said I did it. More than once. But I can't remember things so good. Then they called me mean names. They called... They called me a liar, Billy. Liability. Yes. They said I have to live here now and gave me this letter. But I'm not good with words. Do you. Do you think you could read it for me? Yes. I'll read it for you. Magistrate Sentius to Duilius. I am writing to you in relation to your un incorrigible antisocial behavior arising from your obsession with an alleged lost treasure. Well, I am sympathetic to your plight in the passing of your guardian Hannibal some weeks ago. I wish to impress upon you an important message. The treasure you seek does not exist. Given your memory limitations, it seems likely you simply misremembered. More importantly, since you have on several occasions been caught trespassing, including around the cisterns which are strictly off limits to all citizens, I have reluctantly come to the conclusion that you are a liability to this community and must have your freedom limited, lest you break the golden rule. It is my hope that this letter will assist you to remember why you're incarcerated should you experience further lapses in memory. What does it say? It says they caught you trespassing several times and locked you up to stop you breaking the golden rule. Uh, what treasure? What treasure? 
My friend Hannibal used to look after him. He said he always would. But then, he died. It was very sad. He said, if anything ever happened to him, I had to find something very precious hidden away. He gave me this key and made me promise to keep it safe until I found the treasure. But I couldn't find it. All I remember is he said something about the cisterns. But when I went up to the high one, they put me in here. Now nobody looks after me. Except my friend Galerius. And Ek. Ek. The priestess lady. She's a nice lady. If you give me the key, I can try to find out what it unlocks. Hannibal said I sh shouldn't give it to anyone I didn't trust. But maybe you could help me get out of here. Then I, I would trust you a lot. Let me talk to the magistrate about getting you out of here. They can't keep you locked up. Galerius already tried that. He said the magistrate wouldn't listen, no matter what. Maybe I'll just break you out. Is that a sin? Is that a sin in the city? What about the rules? I don't want everyone to get in trouble because I was bad. Then maybe it's a time we had a new magistrate. Like Galerius? He's nice. I like Galerius. He made me a doll and everything. If you help make him magistrate, he can get me out of here and I can give you the key to my treasure. Hannibal said it was in the cisterns. I can't remember Sorry. what it was, just that it was way up high and very precious. I'll see what I can do, Dooley. There's a lot going on. Do you happen to know a way out of here? You're going to let me out of here? Oh. Really? I see. Well, I can try. Let me talk to the magistrate about getting you out of here, Dooley. Galerius already tried that. He said the magistrate wouldn't listen, no matter what. Like, Galerius, if you help make him magistrate, Hannibal said it was in the cisterns. Oh, I'll be going now to leave. Bye-bye. You were the first one to welcome me, Galerius. It's you again. Hope you're settling in, friend. Now, what's on your mind? What do you think about the election? Uh, I can't see how I could vote for either candidate. I don't like Sentius much, but Maliolus is almost as bad. Even I could do a better job. Me, a farmer. And I've never given a speech or put on a toga in my life. Have you ever thought about running for Magistrate yourself? I've bounced the idea around once or twice, mainly as a way of getting Dooley set free. God knows Sentius is never going to do it. But from what I hear, Maliolus has the election stitched up. Nobody's going to take him on and win. And maybe that's not such a bad thing. I mean, he talks a lot about freedom, so I'm hoping if he's elected, he'll release Dooley from his cell. That's good enough for me. Well, officially, why is Dooley in a cell? Because Sentius put him there. Poor Dooley was just wandering around looking for some imaginary treasure. Now a magistrate accused him of being a thief. Well, it's nonsense, of course. Dooley's the most harmless man you'll ever meet. But Sentius really has it in for him, for some reason. 
perhaps he knows something about the treasure. Let's talk about something else. Gladly. What do you think about the Golden Rule? Oh, I don't give it much thought these days. I mean, everybody here has got their own view about what we need to do to survive. But I say, let's spend less time arguing about what it means to be good and just get on with it, you know? You have a good heart, Galerius. I'll be going now. All right. See you around. Hello. Have we met before? I see. Perhaps he's suffering from short-term memory loss. I'll get back to you, Dooley. Bye-bye. Where do I start? Everyone here is a step away from... I don't even know what a sin here is. Obviously getting shot through the heart. And that man, that outsider who shot me. He was subjected to the same laws as this place. You know? If I'm stuck in a time loop, I may as well use my information to help people. Help! You have to do something! A man arrived in the baths, a real nasty sort, with his face all covered up, and he's got a weapon! You have to do something, or he's gonna break the golden rule! I tried that. How do I do that? I don't have a weapon. None of us do. The Magistrate made us throw them all into the chasm. So now this man's bow is the only one in the city. You'll just have to improvise. I'll see what I can do, but I have to tell you not to enter. Thank you. He's still in there, somewhere. I have to hide. Find me in this empty shrine when it's over. Don't go into the empty shrine. Do not go in there. What? Why? Just trust me. Uh, all right, um, fine. Come and find me in my bakery instead. Please be careful. It's going to collapse. Let's not risk it. The man isn't there yet. He watches. Who watches? Shh, I'm hiding. At least you're alive, Fabia. <sighs> Let's have a look, see. the cistern and the hidden treasure. Galerius is a possible candidate for the election, but we don't want to get involved in that right now. Malayalus, if he wins, from what I understood, he wants more freedom for the people. But how can freedom survive in a place like this? How much freedom must we given up for people to believe that they can live in perfect harmony. <sighs> the Vestal Priestess may have more insight. She didn't notice patterns. I did notice people were hitting their heads or falling to a river or blacking out. Around the same time as well, when Rome was burning, Emperor Nero is out there. 
We need to find out more then. We need to find the pattern. We need to establish something. Some order to all this. Did you stop him? No, not yet. But I do have some questions for you, Fabia. What are you waiting for? I understand that it's a pressing issue. <laughs> Secundus and Cythera were together until the end. Traveler from a faraway land. You mentioned Fabio was like a daughter to you. Greetings, I'm Georgius. It gladdens me to see another foreigner in our midst. We must stick together, you and I. And I must say, my sartorial friend, your clothing is most extraordinary. Leather boots in place of sandals, trousers with precise stitching, and such a curious design. I have traveled distant trade routes from the markets of Damascus to the farms of India, and never have I seen anyone dressed quite like you. Tell me, I must know. From which exotic part of the world do you hail? My nation doesn't even exist yet. Is this a riddle, or perhaps you mean to say you feel like you are ahead of your time? I feel the same way. Another reason for us to stick together. We will have much time here to get to know one another. But for now, do you require assistance? I know you do not require clothing, so information perhaps? What's your story, Georges? My story? How kind of you to ask. I am a tailor and I run the humble shop in the forum. Why set up a tailor shop here? You mean to say, with all the turmoil and terror of the Golden Rule and so few customers, why bother setting shop at all? Yes, more or less. I'll tell you, it is precisely because of the Golden Rule that I wish to remind my friends of the importance of looking one's best. I say, the more of our customs we preserve down here, the more we can preserve a semblance of normality, the better our chances of keeping our heads. Don't you agree? I suppose so. People need to find the familiar. Oh, and there is another reason too. If we all end up as golden statues for future generations to marvel at, I don't know about you, but I would like to look my best. <laughs> I like you already, Georges. Yeah, some of those people who were turned into golden statues, they could have stood to have better. Now that's... Your optimism is infectious, Georges. But how did you end up here? A good question. A very good question indeed. And I would be happy to tell you if only I could remember it clearly myself. Hmm. Why don't you tell me what you do remember? Hmm. I remember I had just been to Rome to sell an extraordinary selection of wares. And drawing in coin, I decided to celebrate my success. I rented a prestigious villa by the Tiber, invited over a few select friends, and we began making our way through some of the most exquisite wine money could buy. Quite a lot of it, in fact. Now, I have had visions and awoken in strange places before. I have even found myself naked in the desert sands more than once, but none of that compares to this. This time, I remember people screaming, then falling into a void as empty as time before creation, gasping for air, and then nothing. When I regained my faculties, I was lying naked by the banks of the Tiber, gods know how many miles from my villa. So you floated down the Tiber? Indeed. I'm lucky I was carrying a little extra weight. <laughs> I believe it kept me afloat. In any case, it seems I'd been rescued and resuscitated by a benevolent stranger. I went to find firewood for his campfire, stumbled across a cave, and discovered that trapdoor temple. And here I am. Karen? The Vestal Priestess seemed to 
be familiar with the name Karen. She did just send me in here looking for Al. She did seem suspicious at first. She wanted something from this place. But she wouldn't go in it herself. Damn it, Karen. Let's talk about something else, Georges. Anything you like. Well, do you know a way out of here? Not so loud. What are you playing at? <laughs> Sorry, did I say the wrong thing? Have you not been told about the last attempt? The last attempt? Oh, then I suppose this duty falls to me. Ah, it is a long story. Well, it's not as if I'm going anywhere. Aha, you are witty. I like that. Of course, the first question any of us asks when we first arrive is, how do I escape? It is only natural after all. And scaling the chasm wall is out of the question, for it is simply too steep and too far. But as they say, if the wind fails, use the oars. And here the second option is to leave the way we came in, through the shaft above the bathhouse. See, the shaft is quite high, but if one gathered up enough wood, one could make a series of ladders and climb one's way out. Lichcast asks, why is every male I pop in to see Bob? <laughs> there was that prick of a merchant out there. He had a wonderful set of hair. But yes, Georges is such a friendly guy. I love him. He's so optimistic. Well, that sounds easy, Georges. Why hasn't anyone done that yet? They have. I am getting to that. There was an attempt made by resourceful fellows who lived here some years ago. They even decided to keep records of their escape attempt for posterity. Unfortunately, as soon as they began to carry the first ladder down the hallway, they heard a godlike voice shake the entire city. And that, tragically, is where their tale ends. So it seems that to merely attempt escape is to invite the wrath of whichever god oversees this place. And so I say, it is best to not even discuss it aloud. Shit. So based on a story, escape is a sin. Got it, thanks. What do you think about the golden rule? Ah, yes. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. As a Greek, this is nothing new to me. It is how our gods operate. Why do you say that? Have you not heard the tale of the god Hades? He was the first to learn this dreadful lesson when he abducted Persephone and imprisoned her in the underworld. When Demeter, the mother of Persephone, learned of this, she did not punish Hades, the guilty one. Instead, she changed the climate of Earth so that it became hot and dry. Nothing grew. The grain turned to empty husks and the rivers dried up. Innocent people died by the tens of thousands until at last the other gods were forced to act lest they have no worshippers left. So yes, we know this rule. This has always been the case. The golden rule has merely brought it into focus. What can we do about it? If we are to survive, I say we must each keep the simple wisdom of Thales of Miletus, first of the seven sages of Greece, who said, Avoid doing what you would blame others for doing. Easier said than done. Regrettably, I think you are correct, my friend. For even if 99% of us adopt this principle, that will never be enough. Sadly, no matter how well we protect ourselves, the life's work of many good people can be undone in the blink of an eye by a single selfish act. I know. I've... seen it happen. Ah, the voice of experience. I am sorry for your loss, my friend. But on a lighter note, I will say one thing for the Golden Rule. For all their grim and haunting poses, these golden statues do make magnificent models for my clothing, do they not? <laughs> uh, hmm. 
who are you going to vote for, Georges? That, my friend, is quite the dilemma. But after some reflection, I'm leaning toward voting for Maleon. I do not enjoy the thought of another visit from Domitius if I voted the wrong way. Domitius? Was he the gladiator out in the courtyard? Is he forcing people to vote for Maleolus? Maleolus. Anything I can do to change that? Nothing comes to my mind, my friend. I'll be going now, Georges. I hope that our paths cross again soon, my friend. Good talk. But if you don't mind, I need to. I need more to go on here. Any clues or leads? But George seems like a trustworthy, Greetings friendly man. And salutations. He's learned how to cope with all this and turning the statues to his advantage, I guess. No wonder they're so well dressed. I guess he's the one I should be watching out for. Salve. Hilarious. So there is a river. Everyone mentioned the Tiber. And two people, I believe, have mentioned the burning of Rome. Her tears. It's a voice again. Let's catch up with this man and have a chat. I heard of Virgil. Excuse me, sir. Ah, a new face. Salve, and welcome to a little community. My name's impossible to pronounce for most people, so you can just call me Virgil. You arrived on a sad day, friend. What with Julia's death? I wish we could have met under better circumstances. <laughs> this truly was a Skyrim mod. This is so distracting. <clears throat> What's your story, Virgil? Well, I'm an architect. Or at least I was back in Rome. That's probably too grandiose a term to describe what I do here. Help out with repairs and try to stop old buildings from collapsing on people. That kind of thing. But you probably don't want to hear about the ingenious architecture or mysterious history of this place. In fact, Virgil, it's actually quite interesting. Tell me about the city's history. Oh, I'm glad you asked. Some of these shrines were constructed hundreds of years ago. Which means Romans have been arriving here for at least that long. But there's one thing that puzzles me. The oldest shrine in this avenue isn't Roman at all. It's Greek. Is that the one I saw? The rundown temple by that collapsing shrine. Isn't it common for Romans to copy Greek art and architecture? Well, yes, that could be the reason. Or it could mean that there were Greeks living and worshipping here before the Romans arrived. Which begs the interesting question, who really built this place? And could it be far older than any of us imagine? If only there was a way we could talk to the people who came here before us. The stories they could tell. There are markings and I have been hearing whispers. Tell me about the city's architecture, Virgil. Gladly. Personally, my favorite thing about this place is the aqueducts, those series of adjoining arches. 
They're an ingenious feat of Roman engineering with a very practical purpose. They take fresh water coming from outside the city and distribute it all across the chasm. It's funneled below the palace and into a cistern beneath the great temple. Some of it flows down into another cistern beneath the villas, and the rest is funneled to the shrine of Proserpina, where it fills the lake and allows us to Don't fish and farm. Time. If they bring water into the city, could we use them to escape? Though, based on the account of Georges, escape is a sin. Fabled up cinema fan, yeah, this guy is shaking, but I like his history lessons and architectural lessons. So let's not, I don't think he's gonna sin anytime soon. Well, if they bring water into the city, could we use them to escape? Hey, not so loud. Just talking about that could anger the gods for all we know. I'm not saying it's impossible, but you'd have to find a way inside somehow. Just please. Try to be a bit more discreet about it. Tell me about the temple up on the bluff. You mean the great temple? This one's a bit of a mystery. Given the way it's positioned so prominently, looking down on us, it's clear that whoever built it felt it was the most important temple in the city. Unfortunately, someone else went out of their way to keep its purpose a mystery, you see. Usually a temple is dedicated to a particular god, like Proserpina, or Diana, or Apollo. Usually, that god is obvious. But in this case, it's unknown. There's an obelisk out the front, which probably used to bear the name of this unknown god. But it appears some barbarian defaced it. And of course we can't get inside because it's locked up tighter than the temple of Saturn in Rome. And that contains the treasury. So we're all left wondering, which god is that temple dedicated to? And could it be the one responsible for the golden rule? Unless somebody figures out a way inside, I suppose we'll never know. Virgil's just really excited to talk to us about buildings and our old architecture. This is why he's shaking in delight right now. Let's talk about something else, Virgil. You might get a heart attack with all this excitement. Well, what are your thoughts? Do you know a way out of here aside from the cistern? You wouldn't believe how often the new ones ask that question. But I tell you the same thing I tell everyone else. There are much worse places to live out your days. You might have a few sleepless nights thinking about the golden rule. But once you get used to the fear, Knowing that a single slip-up could cost you everything, it's not too bad. Nothing new to me, anyway. Slip-up? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, I just mean I grew up in the Batavi tribe, far to the north in Novio Magus, and learned to expect a bit of hostility. They weren't nearly as tolerant as the Romans. What do you think about the Golden Rule? Some people say it's divine the work of a god, but I'm not so sure. It just seems so flawed to me. Like it's distinctly human. I mean, once you've been here long enough, you'll notice people doing things that just seem so wrong to you. But this so-called god doesn't seem to care, which means one of two things. Either you don't know the difference between right and wrong, or this unknown god doesn't, and I'm pretty sure I know the difference. Do you? I was raised to be good and kind, but... Those meant different things in different times. Not so sure. People could be utterly cruel. And yet, literally not commit a sin by your standards. When does a thing become a sin and when does the city get punished for it? How far are people allowed to stretch this, bend this rule? I'm not so sure. Fair enough. Well, I noticed the graffiti. 
What does it mean? Oh, it means someone thinks I'm a sinner and that I'm going to break the golden rule. Why does someone think that? Look, I haven't done anything wrong, if that's what you're thinking. Somebody just has a problem with my preference for male company. Bloody hell. I see. And when you grow up in the north as I did in the city of Novio Magus, you expect a bit of hostility. The Batavi are not known for their tolerance. I saw enough friends killed or driven away to know the cost of not keeping your personal affairs to yourself. So I hid who I was for, what was it, nearly 10 years? Watching what I said and where I looked. But that kind of fear eats away at you slowly until living isn't any better than the thing you were afraid of. Needless to say, since I'm now living underground, halfway across the known world with an assumed name, my openness didn't go down well among the enlightened folk of the Batavi. Go on. In any case, the Romans are far more accepting, and among them, I get to be who I am. Or at least, I thought that was the case. It seems I was wrong. No, how could... But this god... determine your sexuality to be a sin. Well... Do you know who's writing the graffiti? Uh... It's not just graffiti. I have quite a collection of handwritten notes too. The strange thing is, I keep my personal affairs to myself. I've never really been interested in any of the men here. Not my type. So I'm not sure what I could have done to upset this person. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably one of those cultists. So there are cultists here. Like that masked man who's talking about cultists. Strange bunch. They insist there's only one god, and that he considers my nature a sin. Can you believe that? If there are any of them here, I know they won't god. admit it. Not since they supposedly burned down half of Rome last year and went into hiding. All I know is if these threats keep escalating, eventually my secret admirer is going to cross a line and break the golden rule. Let me look into it for you, Virgil. What? Really? I... I didn't expect that. But thanks. It's always a pleasure to meet someone so selfless. I'm glad you arrived when you did. I'd start by figuring out who the cultists are. Or maybe ask around among the merchants here. Someone who lives or works in the forum must have seen something. But if you find them, please don't hurt or humiliate them. I suspect they're just confused. Let's see what I can do. Well, who are you going to vote for? Well, Maliolis is talking about loosening some of the restrictions in this place. And while it's all a bit vague, at least he has a vision. Anything I can do to change that? My vote isn't for sale, if that's what you're asking. I'll be going now. Nice to talk to you. Sinner. Are these cultists Christians? Salve. So you're the architect. These are your pile of notes you've been receiving. Can we compare the handwriting? Find out who is doing this. I can't. <sighs> I need to solve this. But there's all of these people need help. How can I help everyone? <sighs> Virgil. Do you really want to be responsible for the sin that destroys your soul? Virgil, I know who you are and what you want. 
turn away from this path before we all suffer for your sins. Is your God dictating what is a sin or not? Who is watching? Make sure you stay away from that empty shrine. It's going to collapse at any moment. I haven't been here before. These butterflies. Ulpius loves Centilia. Corrected to Ulpius killed Centilia. Is Ulpius the lover of Centilia? Or was Ulpius trying to prevent her from escaping? If Georges was right, if escaping is a sin here. What was your sin? The Myth of the Golden Rule by Dorothas the Younger. As per our custom, I shall begin by paying my respects to the god responsible for this city. For our continued prosperity and tranquil seclusion, he deserves our admiration. But here I must depart from custom, for his attempt at imposing strict rule upon us is oppressive and overreaching, and deserving of our contempt. And I guess that's why you would turn to gold. explore more. What does this lead to? What? Is this stealing? Well, the game is telling me this isn't stealing, but I wouldn't know as a character. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave it there just in case. This place is huge. This is a voice directing me to people. I should probably arm myself. What does this lead to? Hmm. That's scraping again. Possibly the last bottle of wine in the city. Hmm. If nobody's been around here, is this gonna count as stealing? One way to find out. Alright, statues didn't come to life and try to kill me. Well, I'm still alive.
people down here. May the gods be kinder to you than they were to us, stranger. Ceiling. All right, so reads back here. find a pattern. Getting my bearings in the city. Fortune smile on your sister. Galerius. Watch in the wall. Even sure if all of this is real, if or if I just lost my mind or drowned in the Tiber and I'm in the underworld now. So that way lies the shrine. Let's have a stroll around the city. Be familiar with be more familiar with our surroundings. This must be the aqueduct. Not stealing. So this is where it began. Serpina. So they say people attempted to escape through here. Not stealing. I see. Hmm. How far can I go? I have a bad feeling about this. They've tried. What of the priestess? Uh, will this support my weight? I guess not. Ah. Something's there. How do I get there? <laughs> yeah. These people are from another time. I do appreciate the, well, <laughs> the frankness and honesty of the people here. They 
They're saying what they believe in. We know better. 2,000 years in the future. But when in Rome, right? When in Rome, who is setting these laws? Who is declaring what is a sin? And what else lies in the dark heart of this place? And with that, we're, we'll be wrapping up the stream now. We don't have much time anymore, but thank you everyone for tuning in. This has been quite fascinating. And there's just so much more, and I've only scratched the surface, and there's so many more people to talk to. I've talked to what? A few people, chat? But when the stream, let's find out. You know? Who is this temple dedicated to? And the voice tells me I can trust the priestess. The voice did save me from an untimely death by not going to the shrine. That's familiar. It seems somebody removed the plaque from here, only to find it to decipher the meaning of the obelisk. Plaque, you say? Locked. How can we pass this test if we don't know the rules? And we will find the rules together. Jump. Jump. Are you mad? Uh. No. You may have saved my life once, but I, I'm i not going to jump. I'm going to solve this. I'm going to get to know every single one of these people. And I'm going to uncover the truth behind all this. We can help a few people along. That'll be enough for me. This is Daisy Barnes, signing off. Tabletop cinema fan, will there be a part two? It seems so. I, th I read that the game was just going to take around three hours <laughs> it's been three hours and we haven't really gotten anywhere but I'm so intrigued there's so many more people left to find and talk to it seems that they're going through their own routines and so we just have to find them and piece together the puzzle slowly but surely it doesn't seem that we have a strict time limit or I'm not sure yet if this was a Skyrim mod then Perhaps they already coded in that the election is going to happen in a certain amount of time. I haven't established yet how... I know... Well, we got shot once. The golden statues acted up. And they're going to turn everyone to gold. But I was able to escape through the portal and restart time. So... Definitely the first person we met upon waking up. Same thing. She found us in the river. Somehow we were in the Tiber, just like all these other people. So next session in part two, 
I'm gonna continue getting to know the people of this place. Ask what their story is. How they got here. And slowly piece together their relationships with each other. Then we'll hopefully have a clearer picture as to who may be the one to break the golden rule first. Now the strange thing is, the magistrate who asked for my help, he claims that he knows someone is going to break the rule. But what tipped him off? Was it the voices telling him that someone is going to sin? And this is his last attempt. His last desperate attempt to save his people. The people right now seem to want to vote for Malayalus, who vows to give people more freedom. But we can already see how much a golden rule is, has been strangling these people. It just You can just feel it. They may not show it, but in their very hearts, it's just twisting them from inside. It's, it's a bit too much. So yeah, there's lots to ponder on. In part two, we're going to get to know the people of this community. We're gonna, hopefully the priestess will find... Hopefully the priestess will help us as well. Okay, hopefully you all found that intriguing. I know it is quite pretty as it is a slow build, but these people are interesting to talk to. They've had interesting th things to say. The sound design. This is the sign of everything. It's it's all fa so fascinating. So hopefully we'll see you next Thursday when we continue this. Every Thursday, I'll be playing The Forgotten City and we'll be playing it to completion. So thank you again for everyone for tuning in. This Saturday, I'll be returning to Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut. And on Tuesday, we'll be continuing our playthrough of Wildermyth. So stay tuned for that. If you enjoy this content and want to see more and keep, and keep up to date with our playthroughs, Please like and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. If you want to continue this discussion or talk about what may be the truth behind this mystery, hop in on our Discord. So this has been Mikey of Tabletop Cinema. It's great to have you at the table. Have a great day, everyone.